We started um, funding about five years ago with the idea of addressing the needs of vulnerable individuals and communities. And two or three years into our funding, we came to the conclusion that to really do this properly, we were really going to have to uh, allocate a significantly larger amount of money. There are so many problems and so many vulnerable in individuals that we really couldn't do it on the amount of resources that we had. So it was about that time that we heard about this film called Born Into Brothels. We went up to the editing suite, and I really wasn't sure what an editing suite was at that point, and we watched this footage, and it struck me that there is no way that you could begin to describe what was happening in this brothel in Calcutta short of seeing these colors and these people and these children. And I had a bit of a transformational experience. I suddenly thought rather than writing academic papers that had been my, my past, the way we could truly have an impact was to use a film as a vehicle for igniting social change. We gave a little bit of money to Finishing Funds, and of course that went on to win the Academy Award for Best Documentary. And very gradually we began getting involved in funding films, so that was how we started. We then um, got on people's radar screens relatively uh, quickly, as you can imagine, and at the beginning we gave almost entirely production funding. We would give primarily Finishing Funds, Completion Funds, and we were not terribly strategic. So it became clear that we had to learn how to choose films that really were obviously relevant to our mission, but that could lend themselves to an effective outreach strategy. And so we went into this partnership mode, working very closely with what we thought were extraordinarily strong community engagement groups, working films, other individuals that we've talked to who are good at community engagement. And now we are primarily interested in outreach. We're primarily interested in what kind of capacity that film has to really engage communities and elicit real social change. One of the issues that Fledgling has always focused on was how do we measure the impact of our funding. So when we began this shift to creative media, we've constantly asked ourselves, how do we know we're having an impact? So we really like to think now about what impact specifically is. And we now have a model that we use that really has led to a sense, uh, to a series of lenses that we use when we look at any film. Is it likely to be seen by a lot of people? Is it likely to actually change laws? Is it likely to raise awareness? And bottom line is that no matter what the capacity of that film might be to change hearts, change minds, etc., if it's not a fabulously compelling story, it's never going to happen. At the core is a compelling, high-quality narrative film that people want to see. And we love when it goes to Sundance or has a festival premiere. But having a film at a major festival doesn't mean that that film is going to have significant impact, doesn't mean that that, going, that film is going to have legs. We also want to look at the ability of that project to raise awareness, to engage the public over time, to strengthen social movements, and then ultimately we think with all of those things in place, you get to social change. One of our earlier grants, Ghost of Abu Ghraib, was about a topic that was highly timely and something that we all were really worrying about, government uh, attitudes and actions around torture. So we began with the obvious and began looking at the quality media piece. So for Ghost, we could really point to some key factors there. We could point to its premiere at Sundance. We could point to its HBO broadcast. We could point to the fact that it was nominated for four Emmys and won one, and by many accounts that would be enough. But because we're interested in social impact, we began to look at the next level. So then we said, well, can it raise public awareness around this issue? Is the broader public going to see it? How many people are actually going to learn about this issue from the film? So for measures there, we look at its HBO broadcast, the number of people that actually saw the film. We look at coverage in the newspapers so that people may not have tuned in, but they know about the film and the issue because they read about it in the paper. The awareness sets the stage, but we also want people to go from knowing about the issue to saying, I need to do something about that issue. So we look at measures of public engagement. Do people actually go to the website? Do they actually look at the take action campaigns? Do they become involved with organizations that are really doing strong work on this issue year in and year out? 
So how is that film actually pushing the public to become more engaged? Individual action alone, I think rarely would lead to long-term kind of policy change. We really need to move to kind of collective action. And for that dimension, we're really looking at the nonprofit organizations on the ground that are already doing work on the issue. And is there a way that our films can help them do their work better? Ghosts of Aubrey Gray had tremendous impact on that particular dimension. They were able to get some major organizations to come on board to help them with that campaign. Organizations like ACLU, Human Rights First, Amnesty International, the National Religious Campaign Against Torture. And we could really say that that film helped those organizations do their work better. They helped develop the Take Action campaign. They used that film to build their movement and to bring people into screenings that could learn about torture, but they could also learn more broadly about what the ACLU does. But it also was really beneficial to the filmmaker and to the film, because in addition to those people who might have seen it on HBO, a huge number of people saw it through community-based screenings. There were over 3,500 of them. That's a lot of people that saw this film that wouldn't otherwise have seen it, and that was all based on the strength of these partner organizations.